Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at what's coming through for the Twin Flame Collective through this new moon in Sagittarius portal, solar eclipse portal that we are going to be experiencing on December 4th. So we're going to take a look at the energies around this time with the Twin Flame Collective. We're going to see some shadows that could come up to be worked through, as well as some healing that's going to be available. And I'm going to finish it off with some message cards from your twin. So I'm going to start off with some oracle cards just to see kind of what are some of the energies right now for this eclipse moon portal for the Twin Flame Collective. Grail Knight, and it says Romance, Illusion, Seeking the Sacred. So definitely relates to the connection itself, and I'm really picking up that uh, the twins are going to be sort of facing any illusions they might have had previously about the connection, or even in terms of people that are in a state of separation, the illusion of separation is going to be highlighted, especially at this time, in terms of on the 3D, twins are can be in a state of separation or they can be in a state of union. However, energetically on the 5D, twins are always together. So really what's happening in the 3D, energetically speaking, is just an illusion. And the card letting go came up also. And so with all that water energy, um, the little waterfall there, I'm really being drawn to uh, this emotional cleansing and so letting go of, again, these illusions of separation. If it's a no contact situation or a runner chaser situation, just really letting go of that idea of not being together because as I was saying, energetically speaking, twins are always together. And we've also got the water fairy feelings and emotions. So again, more of that watery emotion and any kind of pain or confusion associated with that with a separation state. So let's see what other sort of areas are going to be highlighted during this moon and solar eclipse for the Twin Flame Collective at this time. So the card that came up is back to what you love, reevaluate your desires. So I feel that, again, letting go of that uh, kind of the illusion of separation that's being highlighted and just really coming back to center, coming back to each other, energetically speaking, with all of these butterflies here, it's really highlighting a... a metamorphosis of the connection and a transmutation of a state of a separation mindset and we've got the sun here so that ties in really beautifully with the solar eclipse that's coming up and with the doves here that can be messages as far as telepathic communication is coming in strongly or in a dream state and for some of you out there it'll be a communication that happens in the 3d either in person or via text email um, it can be something online or even a voicemail that they leave. Something, um, for some of you, a letter that comes in the mail. If people still write letters, um, just kind of take it however it resonates for your situation if that occurs and applies to you. But some kind of communication that really lets you know, I'm picking up those strongly energetically speaking, so in a 5D sense, that lets you know that you and your twin, despite any... 3D separation are still very much connected in the 5D and very much entwined and that that love still still exists. The flame still burns despite what's happening um, in the material world. So let's see if there's any, let's see, I'm going to use these, any kind of other information as far as what wants to come up during this new moon and solar eclipse. So we've got power 
And there she is with that solar crown. So that fits in really nicely um, with the energies at this time that are being tapped into. And I'm really feeling a sense of, you know, taking back one's power, um, empowering the twins as a couple, whether in communication, in union, or in separation. But really that letting go of that sense of illusion, it leads to an empowerment and maybe a rejuvenation for a lot of you in terms of the connection and the feelings that you have for each other. And we've got the card hope. So yeah, whatever this communication, either again, telepathically in dreams or in the three dimensional sense, um, it's going to bring a lot of hope back into the connection between you guys. And with this card, we've got those butterflies again, that showed up over here. So metamorphosis, transformation in terms of the ideas about the connection or idea, any ideas of separation. And here we go again with a dove. So bringing in a lot of peace where there might've been turmoil, conflict, um, hurt feelings. A lot of that's going to subside with this new moon and solar eclipse energy. And again, birds being messengers, symbols of messages. So some form of communication, even energetically your twin reaching out or you can of course reach out to your twin to extend that loving energy let them know that you still care that you're still there and that can really help both twins individually on their journey moving forward and also then in a union sense five dimensionally and if you are in union in the 3d then it's a it's coming closer together and we've also got gentleness again with these these doves. So doves can be um, a sign for you that this message is for you. This can be a symbol of, you know, if these are showing up in your reality or on social media, that can be a sign from the universe that this message applies to you or you're on the right track. And in terms of the twin flame community doves are definitely symbolic of that doves mate for life so it's it's they're symbols of that eternal bond and we've got here this woman and she's in a bridal gown and a veil so I'm really feeling this alchemical marriage between the twins that's going to come up in terms of really to rejuvenate that connection between the two of them and to really give this sense of sort of renewed commitment that'll happen, even if it's just energetically speaking, but for a lot of you, it will be something in the 3D where a period of separation or no contact has the potential to come to an end with these, you know, as these new moon and eclipse energies sort of usher in a new phase. So I'm going to get some tarot now and we're going to take a look at what other sort of energies do we need to know? What's going on right now with the twins that this, these oracle cards that have come out that are highlighted and what are some of the things that can be expected? So we've got the three of cups and that's a card of community and celebration. So again, with all this, this energy of emotions and this closeness and this letting go of the pain, I feel that with this new moon and solar eclipse portal, it's going to really usher in a period of celebration and happiness and closeness between the twins, even if it's energetically speaking, but then also there's indications that that can be in a three-dimensional sense for a lot of you. So what are some of the other energies that are going to be coming up through this new moon solar eclipse portal for the twin flame collective? What kind of things are on the horizon with this? What can the twins expect at this time? Okay. So we've got the Empress. So that speaks, that's Venusian energy, Venus. And so in terms of signs, that could be Libra or Taurus. That could be you. That could be your twin. But Venus is the planet of love. So it really highlights this loving energy, the love between the twins, the energetic connection between them. And really this sense of fertility and a blossoming within the connection, a closeness, even energetically speaking between them is definitely on the horizon as we enter this new moon cycle between 
the upcoming new moon in Sagittarius, and then the next new moon is on January 2nd, and that's the new moon in Capricorn. So that'll take us through the end of 2021 and just right over that that threshold into 2022 that in some way there's going to be a deepening of the bond between the twins and there's going to be a real flourishing in terms of the energetic connection and the love between them. And we've got the Knight of Pentacles here as well. So that really speaks to, again, with the communication that was coming up for a lot of you, that's going to be some kind of a material 3D offer that comes in or some kind of communication that occurs from your twin if you're in a state of separation. But it's energetic, the energetic strengthening of the connection and clearing up of any pain and misunderstanding between the two of you before is really highlighted. But in some way, this is going to even affect your material world going forward in terms of this being a real opportunity to move forward, either individually on your journey or together as a couple moving toward union, getting on your, getting on with your divine purpose, your divine mission, your life, you know, getting on your life path. And really through this clearing up of sort of the stagnant, stale, hurt, pent up feelings that would have existed most likely for a lot of you due to some kind of separation or a runner chaser situation, then that really just opens it up for the energies to flow freely between the two of you and for that to really help in terms of creative endeavors that you're doing or again goals and pursuits that you have as far as life purpose or your work that in some way when this connection is sort of the heaviness is alleviated between the two of you then that energy has the open ability to flow more readily in your life and that can that can and will help to benefit other areas of the material world of your life based on having achieved that balance and that satisfaction, even energetically speaking, on that heart chakra soul level. So we also have, let's see, actually, I'm sorry, this is the Knight of Pentacles in this deck, and this would be the Page of Pentacles. So both of these coming up, I mean, this really just... These are confirmation of some substantial change going forward as far as the connection is concerned. And for a lot of you, it's going to be communication in the 3D or your twin coming forward. Perhaps for a lot of you in person, you guys getting together and clearing up the air, having deep heart to heart conversations, or even just if some time has passed, being in each other's physical presence and just having that reignite the energies between the two of you and really just deepen that bond and help to, by spending that time together, help to clear up any kind of misunderstandings that would have been a block between you in the past. So we've got the Seven of Cups, and that to me is indicating that based on when this energetic block, this emotional block is cleared up, it's really going to open up so many possibilities as far as how do you want to move forward with the connection, where do you want to, what area of your life do you want to allow that free-flowing energy that almost like a kundalini energy or, you know, that deep soul connection energy, that bond. There's so many areas of your life that that is then going to have the ability to freely flow into and to nourish. And it's really just going to open up a lot of possibilities, even in terms of how you view the connection and how you view the other person after that block is overcome. Um, it also gives the opportunity to then reevaluate situations in the past that might have happened or any kind of a separation that you two would have gotten into previously. And it's really going to open up this horizon to see things in a new way and have some growth in that capacity going forward. And we've also got the Queen of Pentacles. So yeah, a lot of prosperity is being highlighted and that fits in very well with this, you know, in this deck she's veiled. So again, that kind of like bridal energy and regardless of if you're the feminine or the masculine in this situation, it's definitely indicates this, a closeness 
uh, maybe a recommitment between twins that happens either in the 3D or energetically speaking on the 5D, but really just deepening that understanding of the role of each other in your life and in your ultimate, you know, the longevity of your soul, your souls beyond this lifetime. And based on what occurs and what comes through this eclipse and new moon energy, it's really a new beginning to create something solid, deepen that commitment to each other, deepen that commitment to self, and deepen that commitment to furthering the journey while you both incarnated and have gone through the twin flame journey up to this point with all its ups and downs and the profound joy and the profound sorrow that goes along with that. That's just, it's part of the package. And so something happening with this energy where it's really going to help propel both of you forward in a three dimensional sense, even if it's just, as I was saying, um, a deepening bond, energetically speaking, that then helps fuel your individual endeavors in the material world, carrying out your soul purpose, living your dreams, living your best life, making your best life, becoming the best version of self, embodying that in the material 3D world going forward. So now I'm going to take a look at some potential blocks. I mean, we already saw that it was, it's something in regards to kind of this emotional heaviness, the, maybe the illusion of separation or any kind of illusions that could have been maintained previously about each other and the situation. But we're going to take a look at what specifically is this relating to? What, what kind of emotional things are the twins going to be encountering? So we've got Charon, and that's necessity, focus, and transition. So I that really highlights as far as a blocked emotion and any kind of a separation phase that you two had gone into previously or like a runner-chaser situation. And the feelings of maybe being abandoned or left behind that one or both of you had had experienced and have been holding on to and have perhaps closed down your heart chakra to each other, closed down to this connection, or just said to heck with the twin flame journey in general and just have, having moved off in another direction, but still having those deep waters, that deep kind of water of pain that existed in there and that being an illusion almost is what's, what's really being highlighted. And something then occurring during this new moon, during the solar eclipse, that really helps to dispel that illusion and to highlight some of the perhaps motivations that the other person would have had for running if it was a runner chaser situation or some other things coming to light in terms of even just the things that in a period of separation, you each were able to accomplish on your own that had you stayed together and you'd move forward together as a couple and there hadn't been that period of separation, then these other things, these other accomplishments that you individually had built in the material world wouldn't have been as possi possible because the focus would have been on each other, on that connection, on that relationship. So it really just gives the opportunity to reevaluate and look at things from a different perspective. And we also have Morgan Le Fay, Atonement, Growth and Deceit. So any kind of feelings of betrayal or, again, going into a separation state and maybe, you know, the shadow of having felt abandoned or the other person growing apart or while in the separation state and you're each doing your own thing and you're each growing in your own way, any kind of hurt that would have come up as far as feeling that while alone and not in union with each other and each going in each other's own direction, any kind of fears or feelings that the two of you are then growing apart, maybe you weren't ever meant to be, or doubt even about well, what if this isn't my twin flame because they're not with me and I'm having so much prosperity or so much growth away from this person. And what's really being highlighted is that somehow that any kind of bitterness or resentment as far as that's concerned, is going to be alleviated. It's going to be washed away. You're going to move through that. And you're going to come to understand that that's all part and parcel to this journey. 
is that separation period so that fueled with that initial spark, that initial waken, awakening, that initial intensity of the energy and the love between the two of you, that then propels each twin forward on their individual journey in terms of facing some shadows that they needed to face alone to address those shadows, transmute those shadows into a place of power, or at least taking the power away from those shadows in terms of fears or doubts or insecurities, and then stepping forward into that next energetic vibration of empowerment, of living your best life, of self-improvement, spirituality, growth, self-knowledge, all of these things. And then at a certain point, then the twins have the ability to come come back together but really both have evolved and so they they've leveled up and so they're meeting each other on this new level that when they initially came into contact they were two diff they were two different people on a t on two different energetic levels and the intensity of the connection brings them together propels them apart and that's where growth is happening that up leveling is happening is in the state of separation in order to then orbit back to each other because twins are always we're always in each other's orbits, whether we are in each other's lives physically or it is just an energetic bond. You know, there are times where you can feel your twin very intensely and you feel the connection energetically very intensely. And then there are times where it feels cold and it feels cut off and it feels like they're not there. And if you can almost imagine planets orbiting around the sun, you know, it's the same kind of concept where there's that orbit is always maintained, that synchronicity, that pattern, that movement is always maintained. And there are just different times and for various reasons for growth purposes that that those two orbit closer to each other and they're they're in a closer proximity energetically speaking. And, you know, the telepathy is strong. The dreams are strong. You can intuit the feelings and the experiences that each other are having and offer support energetically very easily at certain times or be receptive of energetic support from that other person very easily at times. And then there are times in the cycle where the orbit kind of extends further away and it becomes a little more difficult to make that contact. It's not so easily felt. Their presence is not so easily felt in your auric field and energetically speaking that doesn't mean they went anywhere that they're gone that the connection's over it just means that there's some growth in these outlying areas that each must endeavor to do on their own and then after that period of growth the orbit it it doesn't it's not like it stops out here in this distant kind of point it's it's always there's always the pullback it's it's constant it's constant growth coming together, moving apart, growth, coming together, and on and on. So a lot of understanding about that is going to come through with this new moon and the solar eclipse. And this can even be something where after a period of the distant orbit, you two are magnetized back to each other, even energetically speaking. And there's an influx of the telepathy, the dreams, the feeling them energetic with, energetically with you, the signs, the synchronicity. So something that quells any kind of feeling of abandonment or loss or doubt as far as if it's your twin flame at all. And a lot of that is going to be overcome and a new sense of clarity is due to arrive. So now I want to take a look at some of the healing that is going to be coming through in this new moon portal, this solar eclipse portal for the Twin Flame Collective. What, what other healing is going to be coming through? Oh my gosh. Okay. A lot of them. So I'll take them all. <laughs> so solar plexus chakra says, it is safe for you to be powerful and take charge of your life in positive ways. So that fits in really nicely with the solar eclipse that we have and this solar plexus chakra, this 
courage and this power center of the body that's you know right above the navel just kind of under the sternum and that really experiencing in both twins and activation and also through this communication that comes in even energetically speaking i really feel that it will empower both twins when they i'm really feeling you know that they've they've kind of orbited apart They've been distant from each other, but then when that coming back together happens, it just reinvigorates things. It reinvigorates a sense of purpose and a sense of commitment to each other and commitment to one's own individual life purpose outside of that twin flame collect connection as well. So we've also got crystals. The energy of crystals supports you and helps with your present situation. So a lot of you are probably into meditating with crystals or working with crystals or in some way are either Reiki healers yourself or would benefit from some Reiki healing at this point in time. And I do have, I have a deck of crystal cards that I'll pull after we get through these other two to take a look at what are some crystals that can be beneficial to work with at this point in time to help support you know, the solar plexus chakra activation, the releasing of these emotional wounds that have been carried and just moving through that emotional difficulty into calmer waters. And we've also got vegetarian vegan. Fresh organic fruits and vegetables give you a boost of high life force energy, which elevates your spiritual frequency. So I'm drawn to that green here and as in terms of the heart chakra. So a lot of this clearing, I feel like there'll be, I was really picking up on, in addition to this solar plexus power center energy, I feel like there is gonna be a reawakening of the heart chakra uh, based on this energetic closeness or this communication in the 3D that happens between the twins. That's just gonna reinvigorate things. And so an additional guidance would be in addition to delving more deeply into crystal meditation or Reiki or working with crystals. If you don't already have, you know, a healthy diet, not necessarily vegan vegetarian, but just maybe limiting the intake of processed foods and opting more for foods you prepare yourself or fresh foods or foods that are in some way closer to, you know, have a lot more life force energy. And just very generally speaking, like if you pick an apple off a tree, that has really high life force energy because you've just taken it from where it was connected with Gaia, with Mother Earth, and it's infused with all that that life and that power and that surge of this living planet. And to pluck that at its at its germination point, at the place of origin, and eat it, that's you know really high life force energy. You go a little further down the line and if you're drying that apple, it's still got a lot of that nutritional value and that connection to source, that connection to Gaia, the connection to its origin, but that's been diminished a little as it's been processed slightly, as things have been done to it and some time has passed, it kind of breaks it down a bit. Go another step further. If you're stewing the apple or you're eating canned apples, I don't, you know, or frozen apples, something like that, apple jelly, apple pie, things like that are even further removed from that source energy. And so it doesn't necessarily make them bad in terms of nutri nutritional content, but it just, it diminishes that energetic connection with Gaia, with source, with Mother Earth that really on an etheric level, it's not just the vitamins and minerals and the things that we eat that are fulfilling us. Energetically speaking, we can connect and get nourishment from the planet, which is everybody's mother. It's where we all live. And so the further down that chain you go, the less of that kind of mana of the earth, that life force energy of planet earth is present in the foods. So what I'm really feeling here, the, the message would be, um, especially for a lot of people who are extremely sensitive, you know, moon cycles, new moons, full moons, eclipses can really affect sensitive people and empaths very strongly. So at this time, in addition to hydrating, drinking a lot of water is coming up because we've had all this water energy in there and that can help to navigate some of these heavier energies and really just process as the downloads and the upgrades are happening. 
making sure to fill your diet or supplement your diet or enhance your diet with as, as many kind of fresh fruits and vegetables or things that are as close to that point of origin to source as possible will be really helpful around this period of time in terms of integrating these new energies and as far as helping release some of those blockages and burdens that want to be cleared away. We've also got the card indigo. The person you're inquiring about is an indigo, meaning a highly sensitive natural born leader. So yeah, with the sensitivity, a lot of you are probably empaths or sensitives. And so this can be a confirmation that this message is for you. If you resonate with the label of indigo or indigo child, crystal child, rainbow child, star child, you know, there's so many different kind of breakdowns with that. So if it's something that you know a lot about and you resonate with, great. This can indicate that this is your message. If it's a new term that's unfamiliar to you, it wouldn't hurt to research it to see maybe it's something that you resonate with. Maybe it's something that can help open up some clarity. It can help maybe give some clarity about this twin flame connection. And I think definitely if you resonate with an indigo, obviously your twin's an indigo too. And so taking a look at you know, the triggers that you personally have as an indigo or the characteristics about you as an indigo and then really applying that to your twin having those same, that same genre of triggers or characteristics or quirks, it can really help to put a new spin on what has happened in the past and maybe explain why perhaps the intensity of the connection caused them to run because as a highly sensitive person, you know, energetically speaking, intense energies feel even more intense to the sensitive, to the indigo, to the empath than it does to, say, the average person. So it can, indigos and empaths and sensitives do require a lot of time to just, you know, that, that time to recharge, you know, for a lot of people that's going in nature or taking salt baths or working with crystals or, you know, alone time. For some people, it's who are real extroverts, then it's being around friends and family. And maybe for a lot of people, that's not really been possible with what's been happening with, you know, the global situation with the pandemic, or maybe they're in some kind of situation of estrangement from their family or friends or, you know, just going through a lot. And so it's not really possible to have that place and that time, that sanctuary to recharge. And so it's also really bringing up, as I was saying, the the two that when they orbit apart and that can feel that disconnect and that coldness, that maybe a lot of that is just people needing to go off for that alone time, that recharge time, not even just about the energies of this connection, but just of life in general and just a sense of overwhelm. And so I think definitely the guidance is to give another perspective. And if you are one of these sensitive people, then along with, you know, kind of the the wholesome things to eat, the clean, pure food and the crystals, you know, maybe some alone time to recognize as a sensitive what you need in order to recharge your own batteries and do that during this new moon, this solar eclipse time. And that can really help to, you know, bring in these new changes or just give that kind of rest before this up leveling, because it does look to be some kind of massive change, even energetically speaking. Um, in each individual's life and existence and also in the energy of the connection. So any kind of period of rest or rejuvenation that you feel inclined to take, definitely do take that. So now I'm going to get, um, oh, I'm going to get one of these crystal cards or a couple of these crystal cards and we're going to see what crystals would be good for Twin Flames to work with during this portal. All right. So we've got retiliated quartz and we've got clear quartz. So both of those are, if you don't have them, um, clear quartz is pretty common. So I think a lot of people have it, work with it. It's pretty all purpose. It's crown chakra. It's also called the master healer. So that can be really good as far as, you know, recharging, recharging the batteries or, you know, just getting a different perspective or helping with any kind of downloads or upgrades that are going to be coming energetically during this eclipse and this um, new moon energy. And 
here with the retiliated quartz, it's that golden, it's kind of a golden quartz, not exactly a smoky quartz, but it's got these little striations in it almost. And so that really ties in with this solar plexus chakra energy. So both of these are really good, like I said, for the crown chakra. And these can be good to meditate with, to keep with you, to keep on your person. Get them if you don't have them. Both are pretty easy to obtain. Clear quartz is probably the easiest to obtain. So if you don't already have them, then if, and you do work with crystals, you resonate with crystals, you like crystals, then these are definitely two that will help during this energetic period. So I'm gonna get some messages now from your twin. And we're going to see what do they want you to know at this time. What are some messages from your twin flames, higher self for this kind of what's happening with this new moon solar eclipses portal. Okay. And they say, I feel badly for the way that I treated you. You didn't deserve that. Yeah. So any kind of like ghosting or running that occurred in the past, they, they're acknowledging it. And they say, you feel like home to me. So that fits in really nicely with this concept of, you know, orbiting back to each other. And let's get a couple more from this stack. See what else does your twin flame have to say to you from their higher self? Other messages twin flames have for each other. All right. Our connection still affects me. Yeah, so any kind of period of separation or cycle of separation that you've been in, um, there's still an energetic connection. It might have, again, been at kind of a cold or a distant point, but they're letting you know that they still love you, they still think about you, and they're making their way back to you. So, let's get some more messages to play. And they say, I don't think I can take your reaction right now. So, this is kind of speaking to me about, you know, when you two do come back, together, even energetically speaking, it's really highlighting an intensity, an intensity of the connection that's kind of making them, I'm feeling like a giddiness, like an excitedness and anticipation, but also a nervousness about that. Because it might have been a long time that the two of you were in some kind of 3D separation or even just energetic separation. Let's see what else, what other messages the twin flames have for each other. Okay, I'm going to take all of these. And they say, would you give me a chance to make things right between us? Yeah, so any kind of period of separation and they're, they're feeling bad about that. They're feeling bad about running or distancing themselves. And as they're making their way back to you, to your orbit, that's what they're thinking and they're feeling. They're like, will this person take me back? Is it, you know, deep down in their heart, they know, of course, you guys are always connected. That love's always there, but there's definitely can be that kind of, fear or hesitation and just again that giddiness of being really excited but also nervous and they say I was reminded of your scent recently so that can you know could have triggered a lot of memories and you know just added to that giddiness and that excitement and kind of the synchronicities maybe starting to to come up more of the telepathy opening up and dreams maybe opening up between you guys and just in some way there being little indications of a coming back to get together either in the 3d or energetically and they say you're all i ever wanted yeah so that feeling of home and you know, just really being energetically tied no matter how far apart or close together you are. And they say there's still so many unsaid things between us. So yeah, that communication energy that was coming up here and emotional heart to heart talks on the horizon and, you know, just even energetically, these feelings of love that they energetically want to express and vibes that they want to send your way. And they're just, they're letting you know that after any period of separation, no contact or distance. They're really yearning for you. They're really missing you. And they're really, when the opportunity presents itself, when you two are closer in conjunction in orbit, they just, they have all this love that they just, they want to pour to you, into your cup. They want to give to you. They want to show you how much they, they feel for you and how much they love you. Okay. So here's another one that wants to come up. I often withdraw to process our connection. It is where I receive greater understanding. 
Yeah, so like I was saying with, you know, sensitives or empaths and needing to withdraw and just being overwhelmed energetically speaking. So they're definitely, that's a confirmation of that right there. Let's see. We need to heal ourselves for union. We have an important mission to fulfill here. So fits in again also with what I was saying about, you know, those periods of orbiting away from each other to do that healing work, that growth independently in order to level up and then meet each other as a new version, as a more healed version of self. And a lot of that healing, if you stay together, you stay in close proximity, even energetically, it's not possible because the, the connection, that energy is just, it's so engulfing. It's so nourishing and there's so much passion and it's just so, it's so all encompassing that there have to be times of moving apart in order to, you know, really use that energy, use that connection to fuel the alchemy of wounds or hurts or, you know, generational healing or healing even from things that have occurred in this lifetime in order to remove blockages and to evolve to raise the vibration and that's something which not everything can be done together so periods of separation are necessary and it looks like a period of separation has definitely been the case here but is coming to a close so let me get one more a couple more out of this deck all right all of these wanted to come so with you i'm on cloud nine you are my heaven and earth so that home feeling, that sanctuary, and all they ever wanted. I have become so empowered. Thank you for believing in me. Yeah, so that solar plexus chakra energy and just looks like a lot of healing has occurred during this, boat for both of you, during this period of separation, a lot of up-leveling. And when you come back together energetically speaking or in the 3D, it's going to be a, a different version of the person than you knew before. It'll be pretty obvious a lot of the healing that has occurred, even in subtle ways, even if it's in ways that they aren't necessarily aware of, just energetically speaking. They've been healing a lot of things, working through a lot of things in the dream state, in meditation, if they're into that, or even just subconsciously. And they say, I love meeting with you on the astral. It's where we create our magic. Yeah, so that telepathy is probably picking back up for a lot of you. Dreams are probably picking back up. And they're just really acknowledging also that notion of, you know, if there's been a separation, any kind of like distance, that there's still that connection. There's still that energetic bond between the two of you that is unbroken. It can't be broken. And they say, every word I say holds pure honesty and integrity. I mean every word you can trust me. So heartfelt communication coming in, these heart-to-heart -heart conversations on the horizon for Twin Flames. And a couple more messages now. Let's see what other what final words do does your twin flame have for you for this new moon solar eclipse portal? I know we are soulmates. So there you go. They In this separation, if they didn't know it before, they know it now. This yearning and just this feeling of, you know, your home, your home for them. And bottom of the deck is, I'm thinking of you right now. Yeah, so if you're thinking of this person right now, which you probably are because you're watching a Twin Flame reading, they're thinking of you. They just want you to know they're thinking of you. You're on their mind. They were reminded of your scent recently. Synchronicity's probably picking back up. They might be seeing your name a lot or just things that remind them of the connection and are an indication of that orbiting back together at this time. So I'm going to finish this off with a Rumi card. And there's a little poem in the book uh, or an excerpt from Rumi for each of these cards. So I thought it'd be nice to kind of read that, like sort of a little love poem from your twin flame. So what does your twin flame, what kind of love, lovey-dovey little poem does your twin flame have for you right now? This new moon solar eclipse. Okay. So... Let love transform. 
and this is a number 14 which breaks down to a five and that's a number of change and so that ties in so beautifully with these other energies that were coming through as far as, you know, an evolution in the connection, a transformation in the connection, a transformation in the dynamic, or even just a change in the way you were seeing things and understanding the concept of that there is no separation between twins. You're always energetically connected. And we've got that also tying in so nicely with this little sunshine here and the solar eclipse energy and just really moving through that portal energetically speaking into a new a new understanding and a new level of connection to each other so let's see okay the spring of love arrives to transform the dust into a garden the call is heard from the heavens to bid the wings of soul to fly. The sea becomes filled with pearls. The dry land receives the water of life. The stone becomes a ruby and the body becomes all soul. So that's really beautiful. And just, you know, the call, the synchronicities that you both are probably experiencing and this coming back together and just really on a deep emotional level, um, even energetically speaking, just clearing up some of that debris, some of that hurt, feelings of abandonment or disappointment or loss, and just really infusing each other with that loving, pure, beautiful energy. And it just, it looks like a really, a really nice up leveling that has occurred during that time of separation. And that also is, you're both going to be pivoted by this new moon and this solar eclipse energy to a recommitment to each other or a deepening of your commitment to each other and ultimately a deepening of your commitment to self. So this is some really wonderful energy and I hope that you enjoyed this reading and that some of these messages resonated with you. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up or comment below. I'd like to hear your story, your feedback. You can subscribe to my channel and get notifications about videos as I post them. I do offer personal readings through my Etsy shop and there's a link for, the, for that in the description box of this video. And you can also follow me on Instagram. Link for that is in the description box as well. So I hope you guys enjoy this new moon and this solar eclipse. And I hope to see you again in another video. Please take care and be well.